Welcome to the Two Cents FC show. I'm your host, Amogu Kugo. Each episode, we'll be talking with individuals from around the soccer world, learning about their stories and getting their unfiltered thoughts and opinions. Today, we're chatting with fellow Cali boy, a young phenom, winger for Wolfsburg and the U.S. men's national team, Uli Yanes. Uh, we'll be getting to know all about Uli and his pro journey and what he likes to do off the pitch. But uh, first and foremost, Uli, thank you for taking the time. Thank you guys for having me. So, so we get we get right into it. We get right into it. When did you fall in love with soccer? When I think I turned when I turned the age of four. Uh, funny story. My dad, um, my dad was also a, a footballer. He was a goalkeeper, and we would real always quick, go to his games. Real, real quick, you have proof? I actually, uh, yeah, I think I do. I have a picture of it, but I'll show you guys after. Love so it that, was like, love that. yeah. So it was um. I think it was just this one game that we went to go see him play, and I think they won like one zero or something. It was like the semifinals, and my dad told me he always tells me the story that um I would get the ball and I wouldn't let it go. So it's like I would have it when as soon as we got there, there was a ball and I was just kicking the ball, and then I like when they're playing, I was always kicking the ball. So I wasn't really paying attention to my dad playing. I was just focused <laughs> on the ball. So ever since that day, that's when I fell in love with the sport. No, I love that. So growing up in SoCal, obviously it's a hotbed for soccer talent. So like take us through the journey. You know, did you play for your school team or did you go directly to club? Like how did that come about? So I was playing um with one of my one of my classmates. His dad's well oh no, sorry about that. That was after. So my dad um made a team in uh in in um in my city, Linwood, California. Um he decided to make a AYSO team, so he was just getting a bunch of kids that didn't know, like that that didn't play soccer, that they they just to pretty much just to create a team. Yeah. So we created a team, and then from from that point forward, it started from AYSO, and then one of my one of my classmates, um, his dad had a team in a not better league, but it was like also it was better than what we were playing now. So um, I he he asked me to join them. I joined them, and then from there, I was playing there for quite some time it was like a good couple of years and then that's when um I guess there was just I guess my dad um got a call from this one club called OC Revolution so small club it was good I mean I had a good two years there and then from there it was just it started just going up and up and up so first it was it was something small and then it started becoming bigger after that yeah and like growing up did you have any like inspirations did you like watch soccer on tv like what was it like growing up in SoCal, developing as a young, you know? I mean, uh, just watching Real Madrid when I was younger. I mean, my, my dad is a big Real Madrid fan, so we would always watch, like, the classicals or when they when Ronaldo would, would be playing. Like, that that's just something that inspired me to be a professional soccer player, you know? Just, like, yeah. seeing, like, them play in front of, like, thousands, thousands of fans. And that was – and it's always been a dream of mine to, like, play play in a stadium full of, full of fans, you know? And, yeah. That's something that I still want to achieve, and that's something I'm still going for. No, I love it. So talk about that, you know, the transition from youth clubs to, you know, going to that LA, LA Galaxy Academy. I mean, it was it was difficult. I mean, I was playing with um, Chios USA at the time, so I was, like, back in – it was, like, um, playing for, like, like small small league clubs, and then I went to um, Chios USA, and from that point forward, that was when um, – you start seeing the difference of like, like the talent, and then like people just play just to play, you know. So mm-hmm. from there, we saw like you could see like the different, the different talent that everyone had. So it was a it was a big challenge for me because it was something that I was like, oh, it's probably gonna be the same thing as like how I play here, you know, like easy, calm, this and that. But once you go to the club level, that's when you see like the difference, like the levels of like how you're supposed to play, how intent, how intense is training and all these other stuff. So you see the the difference of like, from like an amateur club to like a, a professional club. Yeah. So if you could go back in time now, obviously you're, you're, you're well-established, you're a veteran in the game now, even though you're still a young player, uh, what would you tell, you know, young Yuli going into that academy setting or that, that yeah, that setup? Honestly, I feel like I would tell myself like, during the during the time, I feel like you like Uli, you you're like you you did well for yourself, you know. Like if you feel like if you would have gone in the wrong path or you would have done something that you weren't supposed to, you wouldn't be where you're at right now. So, I mean, 
just continue doing what you're doing and you'll get just make sure you stay away from like all the negativity and all the, the bad stuff that you don't need in your life. Yeah, most definitely. I love that. Um, so obviously, you know, I'm sure you had a lot of suitors, you know, to go the MLS route, but you decided to go overseas. Talk about, you know, signing originally for Wolfsburg and, you know, making that adjustment, you know, from youth to academy to, you know, going overseas. I mean, it was a big transition for me, especially because me, uh, for me, I'm more, I'm like, I'm very family orient, uh, oriented. So you're, you're a Cali called, boy, man. Cali yeah, boys never so want to leave. So it's like just being away from family, being away from friends and everything like that. And especially being away from a big city and moving to a smaller city. It was a, it was a big struggle for me because like you're so used to like being around your family your friends like after training like what am I gonna do with my friends like what is my mom's gonna cook and this and that so moving out to Europe it's like okay like you're on your own you gotta figure out what you're gonna do how you're gonna cook like what like all these little like new challenges that are coming into me it's just like at the age of 17 18 it's just like you don't know what to do you know so it's like you call your mom and like you tell her like oh what what do I cook what do I do like it's just like a whole bunch of struggles you know and and honestly, like just just moving the, from LA to Wolfsburg, it was a bit, it was it was difficult. But I mean, I the how do I say the struggle really paid off. If I'm being honest, um, it was difficult, but all the hard work and everything like that, that's what got me to a professional contract here in Wolfsburg. No, I love that. And I remember when you uh, went overseas, you know, there was a lot of talk on social media. Like, why would he do that when he had LA LAC? So talk about, you know, being at a young age and making, you know, a decision for the, the long term. You know, people only think about right now and people mm-hmm. have decisions for careers that they're not even a part of. So talk about that, like at a young age, 17, 18, making such a big decision. But you knew it was for the, the lifetime of your career and not just for that moment. Now, I'm sure you had a lot of doubters and people talking on social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, so talk about how you handled that. And obviously you're seeing the fruits of your labor now, but you might not have sound, saw it back then, you know? Yeah. I mean, for me, it was, I don't know. It was just a whole bunch of things. It could have, uh, one of the main reasons was to, uh, to get um, the experience, to see how it is to live out here, you know, by yourself, being away from family um how it is in the football culture how it is like what like what's the difference between europe and the mls so it was like a lot of like a lot of different situations for me so for me it was it was just like to get a get that experience out here in europe you know no i love it you, yeah like my, my dad always says you got to strike while the iron is hot and obviously you had the opportunity to do, to do so mm-hmm. and these are experiences that you're living that you you know people can never you know speak to yeah of course you're actually doing it um, mm-hmm. So with that being said, uh, obviously you're currently on loan at St. Paulton in Austria. Uh, what's this experience like? I know offline we spoke about you have some important games coming up, but how's that experience been so far? It's been going well. I mean, uh, the first uh, last season, the first half of the season, I was playing my position uh, uh, at wing, outside on the left. So it was it was good. You know, I was playing, I was playing myself, I was getting my rhythm back and everything, and then. The second half of the season, the second part of the season last year, they moved me into the ten position, and and it was new for me because I never played the the ten role, so it was something that I had to adapt, I had to get used to. So I was like, okay, like like I'm gonna have to see how I'm gonna do it, like uh, like yeah. like just like nerves started popping up, you know. I'm like, ah, oh, like I never played this position. What if I play bad? This is that. But then when the game came, um, once the whistle blew, then all the everything just like changed, you know, like all yeah. of that changed. So, and then I started getting used to it, and then I got my rhythm. And then this season has been going really well for me and the club. So right now we're in first place. We're we're fighting to go up to the first league. So right now it's um it's going really well for us. We just got to continue going with the momentum we have right now, and then hopefully by the end of the season we achieve our goals. Love it. So what would you say the difference between number ten and winger position is? Because I remember watching you twenties. <laughs> Uh, you killed it, you know, as a winger, and then now you're mm-hmm. talking about center, center mid as a, as a ten. Talk about the differences in in each position from your angle. I mean, I feel like they're both similar, but at the ten position, you're more active. Like you more, you have a more active role. So you're like the guy that that comes to you, and then you have to decide for like 
your your wingers, your strikers to see like who, who you're gonna play it to. Like, are you gonna play it out wide for the winger to one v one, or are you gonna play it to your striker that's gonna be that's gonna make a run for you and then be one on one with the the keeper? So it's like the winger is like you're 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 making like plays for you, like you're making plays one v one with against a defender, but in the midfield, I feel like you you have to decide like who who's gonna do more damage so if i play to my left winger my left winger is gonna go 1v1 if i play to my striker you have and it's just like the 10 is more of a active role so it's like you mm-hmm. have to be moving to make sure you're in a good a good spot to turn and go or like you turn and then you have to play the ball diagonal to your right back or your winger so it's like the 10 is more active than the outside if i'm being honest no i love that um now you're, you're. I feel like you're. You're pretty well established in Europe. You know, you've been there for you know a couple few years now. Um, what advice would you give someone like a young kid? You know, it's kind of following your footsteps in in terms of make it in Europe. I mean, just don't be afraid to follow your goals. You know, I feel like a lot of a lot of people tend to be like, oh, what if I'm not good enough? This and that. If you if you if you have the abilities to come out to Europe, don't be scared to take the the challenge, the risk, you know, because these are experiences that you're going to need later on in the future. No, I love that. No, I definitely think that's great advice. And I definitely know young folks that are following in y'all's footsteps. You know, there's been a, a, a great generation of young American players that have made that push overseas. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like you said earlier, you know, overseas can get lonely. So what are some things that you do in your off time? Most of the time, it's just like we train in the morning. We have training. Say we have one training. We train in the morning. We eat at one. Me, personally, I just come home, take a nap, wake up, and then I just wait for my boys to hop on the P, uh, the PS5. So that's right, just what usually the, what game right now. Know, right now, PS5. right now, we're playing. We're, right now, we only play three games right now. Right now, we're playing. We play FIFA, but we play pro clubs. Have you heard okay. of pro clubs? Nah, put me on now, game. So pro clubs is um you make a team with your with your friends. So you can create your own team name and then you create your own player and then you start off like terrible. And okay. then from there you have to upgrade your player. So every game that you play you get skill points and then you can upgrade your player from like shooting, defending, uh oh, physical okay. attributes. So it's like you start ranking up your player and then your player starts getting better. So and, who's, like, what's your ideal player? If you were to like customize a player right now, so it's like is it Ronaldinho's touch? You know, Messi's dribbling skills, uh, Tony Cruz long ball passing. Like what? Like what's your ideal player? If you had to customize a player right now, customize a player. Uh, as a, I mean, it could be a lot. I mean, uh-huh. it's just like dribbling. It has to be like Messi. Like <laughs> shooting, it has to be like like Cristiano Ronaldo. Like uh-huh. like IQ has to be like. I don't know, like Modric. Like it's just like oh, it could be anyone. Yeah. To be honest, it's just like you can't really compare. You can't really like you want to add more people to it but it's like difficult that you can't yeah, but it's like right. for me it's just like it's just like for me i'm more of like a player that is like that likes players that are skillful so like Neymar, mm-hmm. like ronaldinho like ronaldo when he was at menu so it's like these are like the type of players i like because it shows them like how they are it shows their flair like they show them the type of player they are and those are the type of players that. that i like that's a great i love that you said that i'm gonna get back to these these games uh we're gonna have to talk to your your agency we're gonna have to work out some type of deal with ps5 and sony but you talked about players showing their skill you know you even mentioned cr7 menu days not when he was a machine scoring goals but when he was showing his flair you being a skillful player obviously growing up in the states they kind of talk down about that like you know it's always get down the line cross it Play mm-hmm. simple. Talk about continuing to have flair, you know, playing in the States growing up. Was it coaches that allowed you to express yourself or you were just like, this is how I play. This is how, what this is what excites me. This is what I want to bring to the game. I mean, when I was playing, um, we call it Mexican League. So when I was playing Mexican League, it was always like a lot of my teammates, a lot of a lot of the other players from the other team were always calling me a ball hogger. But that was mm-hmm. the thing. Like I would like get the ball and I would dribble. Dribble, dribble, yeah. dribble, dribble, and then like when the right time I'll pass, or sometimes I won't even pass the ball. But it was like ever since I was playing Mexican league, it was always just dribbling. Like I love the way that I, I get the ball and I dribble past like four or five defenders, or like I dribble past and then I score. So it was like I always fell in love with like dribbling with the ball. Like the ball wouldn't leave my feet. So it was like I always got so used to like whatever the coaches tell me. If the coaches tell me, oh, you need to play more, pass more. Okay, I'll still do my dribbling, but I'm gonna pass it this time. So and then yeah. once I started getting oh, like to the the club level and then like to the national team level like 
I got that that feeling like the coaches wanted me to dribble, but like at the right moments, make sure you play the right pass. Wait, make sure the ball goes where it's supposed to go. So it was like th- throughout the time I got used to like always just being myself, you know, not letting the coaches tell me, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. I mean, I was always like dribble, 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 dribble. No, I love that you said that. You know, one thing, I'm going to break it down too, because you talked about Mexican League. You know, growing up in California, I played in the Mexican League, the Mexican Sunday <laughs> Leagues. And it just it's it's just a different environment that a lot of youth players aren't accustomed to. And you just learn different things, like, you know, when to dribble, when to pass. Because if you're dribbling mm-hmm. too long, as you Fair know, you're going to get tackled. Yeah. yeah. And then just it the started, different... started getting like a whole rumble. And then everyone, exactly. Oh, There's going to be fights. <laughs> and then they're just like, oh, it's only 20 minutes in and we're already yeah. getting a fight. So, so you learn about yeah. the dribbling. You learn about like gamesmanship, you know, how to understand the nuances of the game, you know, when to go down, when to waste time, when to, you know, slow down the game, when to speed it up. You learn about culture, you know, different things that you just don't mm-hmm. understand if you just play youth soccer. So I highly recommend any youth player that wants to develop, you got to play in the Sunday Men's Mexican League or the Men's League, whatever it is to expose yourself. Now we're seeing young players do like futsal mm-hmm. and different things because they want it. They're trying to get that creativity back. You would agree? Yeah, I mean, my dad, when I was younger, I think I was, I was yeah, when I was like seven, eight, I, st- I was playing futsal for a little bit. I like, I yeah. always loved playing futsal because that's where you can show yourself, you know? Exactly. And I feel like, like, and then it's also good for your footwork, especially if you're an attacking guy. It's all, it's perfect for your footwork. Most so that, like, like you said, like, if you were, like, if you would have to recommend something, futsal is the best, best way to, like, um, how do you say, to make your, I don't know, to make to have fast feet or like move the yeah. ball faster because the ball's head. Have some, so it has some like rhythm. You, so it, it gives, it builds and, the rhythm. Yeah, like you get your, yeah, like you feel it. Like after you take one guy or you make a guy fall, you're like, oh yeah, like I need to keep doing this. You know, I like how it, how it feels and everything. But overall, like futsal is a good way to go. Uh, most definitely. So it it just it it, it promotes creativity. It promotes mm-hmm. you know. We see soccer now is too robotic, you know, play wide, play in the channel, cross it, you know, so you know, have to have that creativity, have to have that flair. So whether it's, you know, developing spaces to allow that cre- creativity, letting your player play in the Mexican League or do futsal. Um, I just love that you said that. And I think it's really important as we talk about all these different ways to uh, develop youth talent. You know, the ways are right here. You just we're just not giving these opportunities. But back to the gaming. All right. So FIFA with your boys. What else are you playing? Uh, we play GTA sometimes. GTA okay. Online. We just try to do, like, missions and everything. But most of the time, like, me and my friends were always, like, messing up on the missions. One of my teammates dies. They want the other one, like, falls from, a, like, an apartment. <laughs> like, it's just, like, we're, we're, like, we're always, like, oh, my God. But And then we play another game called Dead by Day. Like, I don't know if you ever heard of it. No, I haven't heard of that. But I do know GTA, so, like, when you try to, like, mess up and you try to get five stars so everyone chases you. That's the only thing I know about GTA. Uh, Dead by Daylight. So it's um four survivors, one killer. So okay. you're going to have to, like, like escape from, like, there's one, like, there's one place. It's, like, it's, like, an abandoned, like, house or something, woods, whatever. And yeah. you have to do generators that are, that are that are in the map. And you have to do five of them in order for you to leave. So like there's one killer trying to kill the four survivors so he doesn't they don't leave from like the place that you're at. So yeah. that we play that a lot. So it's like it's fun because we're always like when someone dies, we have to try to like get them off the killer or like take them <laughs> off hook. So it's like it's just a whole lot of like communication with the with like where's the killer? How many how, are yeah. you almost done with the generator? So it's like it's fun. Those are the only three games we usually play. Okay. So how did you come across that game? I understand FIFA, I understand GTA, but how did you find this game? Well, my friends, uh, they used to play it before me. So, like, there okay. was, like we, we were getting bored of FIFA. We were getting bored of, like, GTA. And, there were, and then we were looking for games. And they were like, oh, this, like, we played this game with, like, our other friends. Like, let's get it. It was only, like, $5. So, like, the $5 uh, was like, okay, like, let's get it. It's not the full game. It's, like, like partial of the game. So, yeah. I was like, all right. And then when I first played, I died, like, in the first two minutes because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but through time, you start getting better better at the game. So yeah. uh, we just started playing that, and it's fun. All right, cool. So you, all right, so I think you want, like, a Sony deal at some point. I mean, <laughs> Pretty much. Hopefully one day, you know? All right, cool. So uh, speaking to that, you're, you're signed to you know, Paradigm Sports. Uh, how has that relationship been? You know, any advice for anyone signing with the agency? What would you say, and why do you, you know, work with Paradigm? 
I mean, for me, um, when I first met Saruj and when I signed for them, it was, it was something new to me, you know, because it was always like I was with my old agents and I didn't feel like moving somewhere wasn't wasn't gonna help me anywhere. But after the time I got to talk with Saruj, with like with my mom and dad, like we had this good feeling with Saruj, and with Paradigm, it's been like I've been having this good connection with them the past the past month or two months or whatever, and. It's been going really well. Saruj treats me like a little brother, so it's like that's something that I like. He treats me whenever I'm after every game. He's always telling me how you're doing, how's how was the game we're doing. Like I don't know, just a lot of like stuff off the pitch apps that is helping me, you know. So yeah. with them, it's been going really well, and yeah. No, I love that. It's always important to you know have an agent that you 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 feel like is family, you know, someone that mm-hmm. you can trust and. I feel like it helps you, you know, perform not only on the field, but off the field as well. So um, obviously you can't play soccer forever. Um, what are some things that you're looking to do, you know, when you're done playing? Just pretty much one of my main goals is to retire my my mom, retire my family. Um, but I also want to start investing. I also want to see like what could, what could happen later on in the future, you know, but most of, most importantly, just like investing after, after football, you know? Yeah. What does that look like? Is it investing like real estate or stocks? Yeah, or just... real estate. Yeah, real yeah. estate. More real estate. Nice. I know a lot of soccer players that like to get into real estate. So that's really interesting, especially understanding that, you know, you being so young that you're already, you know, looking into that. As yeah. Well. So props to you. So uh, we're going to dive in a little bit more into in, into you as a person, you know? Uh, as it, As it pertains to you, We're going to get into the rapid fire. I hope you're ready. All right. All right, here we go. One interesting fact about you that most people want to know. Oh, my God. That's a good question. I honestly don't know. Because I I, I don't really know anything interesting about me, if I'm being honest. All right, so we're going going to bring it back. This is a two-cent special. We're going to do two caps, right? All right. And one truth. Yeah. All right. Let's see. No. Did I do it right? Yeah. Two truths and one cap. My bad. Oh, it's been a while since. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So it's basically two truths and a lie, but we do it differently here. You got to add some spice to it. Got to add some flavor to it. We got to add some culture to it. So two truths right. and a cap. Let me see. Let me think. Because right now, I don't, I, I don't, like nothing's coming up to my head. Oh, okay. One, uh, two truths, one, uh, two truths, one cap. All right. Yeah. Don't tell Um, us. We, I'm going to have to guess. Don't tell me. All right. Um, when I was younger, I think I was like the age of four or five. I, I was a goalkeeper before I became a winger and, a and, a and a midfielder or whatever. Um, I'm left footed and I started playing club soccer at the age of 11. Oh, this is good. All right. So I know you started off as a left winger, but you're right footed. You know, I know I got to keep keep in touch with the Cali kids that are coming up. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, the cap because your dad was a goalie. So I could see, you know, you're trying to follow your dad's footsteps. And then you played, you said you played Mexican leagues and like AYSO. So you didn't play club till late. Yeah. So the cap is uh, you're left footed. (laughs) <laughs> see oh come on man all right perfect we're gonna get right into it thanks for doing that all right pre-match playlist you know when you head to the game playlist. what's on the playlist it could be it's sometimes it's different it just really depends on the on the vibe of the game sometimes i'd be listening to like french like my i have like a french teammate he we're always uh-huh. i always like every time he plays french music i always like add it to my playlist so okay. it could be french it could be like spanish it could be like English music, so I mean, it just really all depends. So, yeah. I mean, my playlist could be like Gazo, the French guy, um, um, Meek Mill, um, Drake, uh-huh. like just like a whole bunch. Like it's just really like it's on shuffle, and then whatever place, if I like it, that's gonna stay on there. If I don't like it, skip. Perfect. Uh, so we're doing a new segment. I just announced it today. We have a two cents uh, playlist that we do. We had okay. a show, um, so. If you, there's one song you want us to add to the playlist, what do we do? That's a, let me look at one. Let me look. Okay. Um, uh, 
because I'm also getting used to like um um the UK drill because a oh, lot okay. a lot of my team they're putting, a lot of my team, they're putting your game out there, huh? Yeah, my my teammates are always listening to like UK drill, um, <laughs> like French drill. So it's like I hear it every day in training, yeah. before training, uh, before games. So it's something that uh, let me see. Because I also like um, Little Baby. One one song that I like from Little Baby is um, Dreams to Reality. That one's okay. like my favorite song that I really like. That's so, go-to. Yeah, yeah, the go-to. So it's like before we walk out, that's like I put that. That's like my song. I put it there. And then before we walk out, I have to finish the song before I walk out to the, right. the pitch. I love that. All right, perfect. So, We're going to add that to our playlist. Thanks for the thanks for the rec recommendation. All right. Favorite away city. You know, you've been in the States. You've been overseas. What's your favorite away city? Has to be Madrid. Okay. For sure, it has to be Madrid. Can't go wrong there. Yeah. What a great city that is. Yeah, that one, um, that, that one was different. Okay. Favorite food? Like, you know, favorite food where, where you're currently playing? Like, you got to go to Currently playing? Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't have a favorite spot, then, like, I mean, my favorite meal? spot. My my go to meal is like if I if we go to the city here in Vienna, uh, my go to spot is um pasta. That's this place called Vapiano. Uh-huh. Really good. That's like my go to spot every time. Like uh-huh. I can get I can get burgers, I get whatever I want, but that's like my main spot. That's like I like going there because the pasta is good, good pizza, good drinks. So it's like that's like my go to every time I I go to like the city. Perfect. And then real quick, as uh, the last couple questions, uh, this one's still rapid fire. Are you cap tied? With the U.S. Men's National Team? Uh, I don't believe so. So if L Tree came knocking on the door, we're not going to put you on the spot, but <laughs> would you answer that call? I mean, of course. It's just more like just to hear, like, what they have to say and everything like that. Like, what what is their plan with me and, like, what is, like, you know? But, of yeah. course, like, my heart always is always going to be with the U.S. But I'm not, I'm never going to close the door on, on the opportunities that come my way. Love that. A great answer. See, shout out to Paradigm. They got you. They got you answering questions the right way and everything. <laughs> all right. Last question. This is just for me personally, because, all right, we see LA Galaxy struggling. It's, it's tough to see, you know, a storied yeah. franchise. You are a former LA Galaxy member. What do you think they need to do to fix it? If I'm being honest, um, I don't really have the answer to that. I mean, I do watch a couple games and it's just more like, okay, like the way they play is doing well, but it's just like, they don't like, I feel like they just don't create that many chances. You know, it's just like, they need a, like they create the chances, but they don't finish the the final product. So it's like, yeah. I look at it and I'm just like, okay, everyone, like they play their game. Everyone's doing how they're supposed to play in the midfield, the back line, the top three. And it's just like, they just need that, that, that killer instinct, you know, like they need yeah. to finish the, the plays every time. And that's right, something that's that, answer. and that's something I I watch, and it's just like they just need to have that killer mentality when it gets inside the box. Like if so, if like they miss, okay, whatever. Like don't don't like yeah. come at come at them. Just like try to lift them up and try to like bring that that positivity with them. Don't bring the negative tip, uh, negativity with him. Yeah, uh, I like that answer, but I want to even get a little bit deeper. Um, so LA Galaxy in LA, hotbed for youth talent. You know that people like you came up. You know, Edson, uh, 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 what's his name? Sorry, he's the center mid, plays left, left-footed. left Oh, Alex Mendes? Oh, uh, no, no. He's on their team right now. On their team right now. Y- young boy. Oh, uh, Efra. Efra, yeah, Efra. Julian Araujo just, just went to Barca. Mm. So you have top talent that's coming from L.A. What do you think they need to do to keep the talent? And if you got the call back, like, hey, Uli. We want you to come back. We want. We need to turn the ship around. You coming back or what? Just really depends on like what's the plan for like for me and them, you know? Because it's just, yeah. of course, it's like LA is always going to be home. But at the end of the day, if there's not a plan for me, there's no there's no reason for me to go back. Yeah. Like LA, LA Galaxy, they they gave me a home when I was in the academy. They treated me like one of their boys. So got the opportunity training with the sec, uh, playing with the second team, training with the first team at the age of 16, 17. So yeah. I'm always going to be grateful for what they gave me, but if there's no plan for me there and now, then, you know, there's no, yeah. there's no really any point to go back. But overall, like if they give me, if there's a plan there and there's something that's, uh, 
that that show that shows me that you know what like they they have a plan for me in the next couple of years and we'll see you know yeah i love that so basically if you're listening to this, this interview and you gala galaxy basically just saying hey you know you gotta you gotta you gotta come to the table right <laughs> <laughs> basically what's happening but if uh, i was the gm of la galaxy yeah. i would definitely bring y'all home you know y'all, yeah, there's I mean, too much you know, talent I mean, my my main thing is just game playing time in front of my family you know that's something that i yeah. always like that, that's something that I always want to cherish forever. And that's something that I want to give my family back for everything they've done for me. So yeah. that's something I like just playing, you know, playing in front of the best fans in the MLS. So that's something that I, I want to continue growing and get better. So hopefully one day, you know, I get to play in front of my friends and family. No, I love it. So if I ever get the GM position for LA Galaxy, just, hey, I'm calling you. I'm bringing the folks home. On that. Yeah, we'll be talking to <laughs> we'll be talking to Serge. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, it's amazing to see you, you develop. And obviously, you know, there's been a, a great story and you, your story is just still starting out. So we're excited to see where you continue to take it, you know, new heights to reach. Um, if there's anything that you'd want, you know, someone that's listening, someone that's trying to follow in your footsteps to take home. What would you tell them right now? Just make sure you follow your dreams. I mean, if you if times are rough, if things are not going your way, just know God has a plan for you. I mean, yeah, you might be struggling now, but later on in the future, you continue working on where you want to go, to achieve your goals. This like struggle is going to be a struggle wherever you go, no matter if you're like working a nine to five, or if you're not playing at at, a, at your club. As long as you're working hard, like. I always like my dad always told me hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So it's some um, like from that one movie um with Kevin Durant, and every time like he always brings that up. So if you keep working harder and if you keep working hard and you want to achieve where you want to achieve later on in the future, you just have to continue working. Love that man. Um, so for the people that may want to follow you, how can they follow you? You know, see the latest drip. I see you in the LV hoodie, trying to be modest <laughs> and hide it. But um, where can they follow you? Uh, uh, maybe get your gamer tag, all that. Um, on Instagram, it's Uli underscore Soccer Seven. Uh, I don't really, I'm not really much on Twitter. Um, and then if you guys ever want to play me and play me in my club and pro clubs, just make sure you just send me a DM and then we can set something up. You know. Oh, all right, perfect, man. Well, thank you, Uli, for taking the time. Uh, I know it's late out there. Best of luck as y'all close the season. Um, Appreciate it. Best of luck in promotion. Uh, I know you'll be back out in Cali in the off season, so we'll try to link up then. Uh, but that's our show for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review. It helps us get discovered. Obviously, it's, we've been away, but it's for good reason. We're doing some things behind the scenes that y'all are all going to be excited about. But follow us on the socials at Two Cents FC Show and tweet us your comments on the show. Any topics you want me to discuss. Uh, but that's it. Over and out. And uh, thanks again. Thank you.